Are you wearing open toed shoes? Yeah, I think they look pretty good. I mean, they're cute. If you want your toes to jump off that ledge. Welcome to Ruminations on Jetspace Magazine. I'm Lennon Bradshaw. And my name is Arson Nikki. And we're here to make it clear about All Stars Season 3, Episode 2. The shade is real. The shade is real indeed. It's beginning and it's coming at you. Hardcore. I definitely think that there wasn't enough Janet in this episode, <laughs> but there was a lot of Jurassic World, you know? So I definitely feel like we. Uh, Are you referring to Thor G. Thor? No, not at all. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Thor G. Thor uh, Velociraptor that was, impersonation. It was spooky and accurate. Yeah. But if I was like doing like a Janet, like, it'd be like, <laughs> here to make it clear. <laughs> I definitely thought that this episode had a lot of drama. And um, how did you feel about the episode? I could not agree more. I think people, I see people online complaining about the fact that there is no untucked for this season of All Stars. True. And I don't think we need one, nope. as we saw in this episode. We have, in the first five minutes, we have Bendela Krem crying. At the very end, we have Milk crying and going off on some weird tangent. We have Thorgy Thor making Fifi O'Hara comments on the <laughs> runway at the very end when she's eliminated. I mean, we are going hard and we are only in the second episode. We have so much more to go. So I think we're in for a little bit of a shade roller coaster. I don't know. Who do you think the enemy is on this season? Because I definitely think that Milk is quite the enemy. Talking smack shit in the back of the room. Well, if they're keeping Milk on for at least another episode with the way that they're showing her comments and the way that they're painting her, I think they're setting Milk up for something shady. But that might just be my opinion. What about you? What do you think? I definitely think that if they do send Milk home, uh, they'd be one of those queens on the revenge because I think a revenge is about to happen. <gasps> yeah, with the Handmaid's Tale thing. Yes, oh come on, goodness. Chad Michaels in Alaska Thunder, <laughs> fuck. Who look amazing, by the way. Blessed be. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> All right, now we're going to dive into the closet. <sighs> the best and the worst looks of All Star Season 3, Episode 2. So, Arson Nikki. Wah, wah. What are the worst looks of this episode? Thank you, London Bradshaw, for that endearing <laughs> sound effect. Wah, wah. Uh, my least favorite look of this episode was absolutely Milk's Celine Dion. Oh my goodness. If you're going to come after Katya in her All-Star season for her inaccurate uh, Princess Di, you have to come after Milk for her inaccurate Celine Dion. There was nothing... Celine Dion about anything, the makeup, the hair, the outfit. Um, and there was nothing very Celine Dion about the impersonation either. So overall, you're looking at her and you're like, this is Milk trying for something and I'm not 100% sure what. And to top it all off, the look wasn't even that good in the first place. You know, you've got to give us a little bit of drag, in my opinion. You know, give us a little bit of a curvaceous body padding cinch situation. I don't know. It was just wasn't doing it for me. Water waves coming out of the ceiling at the VMA Grammys. I definitely think that I didn't, uh, I was at a bar, so I didn't hear that, what she had gotten for her diva look. And so I had to ask somebody who she was. And I guess she was Celine Dion, which I didn't see it. So Sorry, girl. My worst look that I thought, yes, you asked if I was throwing shade. I did lie to you. I definitely think that if we were to go into Jurassic World, we'd see a Thorgosaurus Rex. Because oh I literally thought she looked like a Velociraptor from <laughs> Jurassic World. I'm laughing because you're totally right. Yeah. So <laughs> as soon as she came out on that runway, it looked really good. And then she turned her head sideways and I was like, Bride of Jurassic World, <laughs> like Bride of Frankenstein meets Jurassic World. You're just digging this hole deeper yeah. and deeper, are you? Like a claw from a dinosaur, <laughs> digging deeper. If I had nails, which I don't. That's what you would be digging. That's what I'd be digging a hole. <laughs> I definitely think that the look was there. It was coinciding with each other. So I don't really know what Michelle Visage was talking about. It could have gone without. 
the giant cone head, square head situation going on. If there was a green wig or a green and black wig that like maybe like an updo type situation, it would have looked spot on, ready to go. I know that black is not a neon color, but green is. So if there was a mixture of that or just a green wig, it would have looked great. I can, I can see that that's a good suggestion. Yeah. Take it the, take the tip next time, Barjee. Yeah, take the tip. Uh, so, wah, wah, wah. That's my like positive. <laughs> Like He's gotta get back. the upward spiral. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think the best look was? I thought the best look had to be by far Kennedy's redemption runway. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> hear me out. So not only do we get a reveal, we get two really fantastic outfits that are cool on their own. We do get the sort of reflective mirror thing on the face thing again, which we've already seen from her in the last episode, which is okay, whatever. But the fact that she was able oh, yeah. to own what could have been a pretty embarrassing untucked moment from her season and take that and run with it and deliver something super fabulous that was also campy and funny and self-referential but was also very glamorous and almost pageant-esque. Um, I thought that was really well done and uh, shows to me that Kennedy has really improved and changed uh, in terms of her look and her attitude and her presentation on the runway. So props to you. That was really cool. I'm looking at the man <laughs> in the mirror. I uh, Linton, I'm really curious. <laughs> I'm really, really curious. What was your favorite runway from this episode? This is Halloween. Oh, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> Wrong holiday, girl. Wrong, Wrong holiday. holiday. I'm Jewish. So I definitely think that our uh, Shangela, is she a snow globe or is she an ornament? But no matter that, she definitely worked it out. The headphones were there. I'm sorry, headphones. Earmuffs were there. Same thing. And yeah, <laughs> she had her Dr. Dre earmuff headphones going on. And the outfit, like it was clear enough in the snow globe to know that it was a snow globe, but you could see every part of her outfit. And not only did she slay it, she was able to walk in her little bubble. I know, she was so impressive. I would have completely taken a tumble in that thing. Yes. I would have fell, my wig would have flew off because I'm known for having wigs fly off. <laughs> but it's not about me. Now we're gonna talk about the tops and the bottoms of this performance and episode. So, Arson, Nikki, yes. I loved your performance just now. Thank you. Psych. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I definitely want to hear what your top performance was of this episode. Well, Lenton, for me, it was unquestionably Ben's lip sync for your legacy against Shangela. And here's why. I can't off the top of my head remember a lip sync quite like this one where it was funny, but it wasn't necessarily funny in terms of like telling the story of the song and going along with that. For me, it was funny because Ben realized where she was at in the lip sync immediately yeah. in the in the immediate moment um and instead of giving up or dialing it down and surrendering she just rolled with it and started copying shangela which we haven't seen anything like that on the show if i can recall um so <laughs> were you just I was Ben Delacroix. I cannot with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, to, wrapping it all up, that was a really brilliant performance, in my opinion. It just worked on so many levels, meta and otherwise. And in terms of all of her performances, she really delivered, but that was the one for me. London, I'm quite curious. What did you think was the best performance of the evening? I definitely think Shangela is slaying the game this episode. I completely agree. I think that we are just, she nailed the New Year's performance. New Year's performance of Mariah Carey. <laughs> Everything about it. And the like the breastplate. The breastplate got me. If people don't know how to wear a breastplate, you don't let the bottom part of your breastplate show or the top part of your breastplate. You either put jewelry or something to block it or something to block it down here. And she just let it all hang out. <laughs> so I was like, you slayed me on RuPaul's Drag Race. Because if you did, any kind of breastplate thing in Seattle, you would get clocked for that. But she was in front of RuPaul and Michelle Massage at that and Tadra Kong. And she just, she was a diva and the whole entire episode. And she made Tadra Kong uncomfortable and made him mad, but she, he could tell that 
She was in character. She was ready to go. And she won that challenge. She annihilated the competition, except for Ben. And I definitely liked the other part of the lip sync when she was laughing at Ben de la Creme. <laughs> she wasn't even mad about it. She just kept doing her thing, and Ben de la Creme was copying her, like you said. And she was just <laughs> going along with it. She, she looked like she wanted to be like, get away from me, girl. Like, this is a serious moment. This is like, I, that's what I'm to London right now. I'm like, get away from me. This is a serious moment. But she's stuck here. Here I am. <laughs> Worst performance. Wah, wah. Wah, uh. Go. Okay, my worst performance was Kennedy Davenport by far. The look was right for the runway, but the performance, no thank you. And here is why. When you are lip syncing, especially when it's on RuPaul's Drag Race, but really any time you're lip syncing as a drag performer, the number one rule is know your words. Yes. And girl, she didn't know her words. The whole, the dance could be great. You know, the charisma could be great. But if you are not delivering the words, you're not lip syncing. We saw it with Valentina last season and we saw how that ended for her. And for me, Kennedy just didn't deliver on that front and that part is so important. So all things aside, that was the worst performance for me by far. And she even stoned her wig. That was fierce, but not with the performance girl. What did you think? I'm curious. I feel like if you're going to do Janet Jackson for Kenny to Davenport, you should know going in, when you hear the words, Janet Jackson, don't be Michael Jackson, man in the mirror for your uh, runway look. Be Janet Jackson. I completely agree. You have all these dance moves. You have all these little things that you have to do that's very Janet, and she didn't get any of them, let alone, like you said, she didn't know her words. I thought that... <sighs> Poor, poor Milk. We are Ooh. just drilling her in this Jet Space episode. And not in a good way. Yeah. She is not 2% today. She, I just didn't think that she was Celine Dion. And I've never seen Celine Dion in a leotard, let alone. Yes, that would have been a beautiful gown, silver and black and everything about it. But I just don't think that she nailed it. And agree. maybe do some like Celine Dion movements. I don't know. I'm not very... Uh, number one on impressions so I don't I shouldn't be saying these things but I mean I'm hosting a show <laughs> so I definitely think that she didn't nail it which you know wah, wah, sucks for milk the tea is real guys the tea is real <sighs> Paula and Arson Nikki's electric kettle from her house I don't know where she lives but she has one Arson there was a lot of shade in this episode. There was. Yeah, I definitely want to hear what you thought the shadiest moment of episode two was. Well, I know for sure for me, it was Thorgy at the end of the elimination where she was sent home and she said, Oh, Jesus, gross. <laughs> I could not believe that she would make a comment like that on exiting. Did she not learn from Fifi O'Hara with her hug refusal on the last uh, season of All Stars? You can't exit looking bitter because the fans are going to lay into you. And it's not a good look for when you're departing and that's the last time we see you. Um, so for that reason and for that reason alone, that was the shadiest moment for me personally. And she's kind of been rude lately, and I definitely know that she got a little burned in Seattle here recently, but she definitely didn't redeem herself in this episode yeah, was, at all. It was Seattle. You know, you have to feel for her as a drag performer um, on the episode because you want to do really well, but when you're that frustrated, it's it's best to maybe keep it to yourself until after yeah. the season airs. And definitely not say that's gross. Exactly. <laughs> what do you think, London? What was the shadiest moment for you? I know we're on episode two, but holy Jesus guacamole. Does Milk remind me of Alaska Thunderfuck? Wow. When she was like, to be standing on that stage. <laughs> not, not be commended for it. I was like, girl, get over yourself. And she was definitely crying and tearing up. And like, what got me is Aja when she just definitely just <laughs> didn't care. She was like, girl, do you want Celine to come over here and sing you a song? <laughs> but what the shadiest, shadiest, shadiest moment is when you know it's RuPaul's Drag Race, you know everybody's mic, but she had no fucks about when we heard her in the back when she says she's safe. She's like, this is Yes. And I was like, girl, you did not slay this challenge. 
you should have not been up there. Not only that, they can hear you. You're on a microphone. Don't give them that fuel for the fire. They will come and get you. The editors can be shady. Yeah. Just like when I'm mic'd here and talking about Ars and Nikki, I'm like, uh, she can hear me. So overall, I definitely think that this episode was really shady. There was a lot of good and bad moments. Wait, and London. Okay. We need to talk about this. Talk Have about you what? read the rumors on the internet about the true meaning of Bibi's presence on this season? Yeah, she definitely wanted to get a second chance. Okay, at... no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is the rumor on the internet that she been circulating wants to be on RuPaul's. Is that she is actually a plant for the judges in the actual contestant pool. The thought is that she's not gonna win any challenges, she's not gonna lose any challenges, she's gonna be safe, and she is going to help pick the winner at the end of the season with RuPaul. You're and lying. I, no, and the reason I think that is because we've got this whole like Handmaid's Tale thing that's been going around with like Chad and Alaska. And I think that whole theme and that whole storyline is going to come into play with BB. I'm almost 100% convinced at this point. I thought that was a really cool conspiracy theory and I am a conspiracy theory. I don't not. believe you. So we okay. will find out. Well, we will uh, see if you uh, and your wrong opinion are uh, going to win out this time, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Let's do a challenge, America and people watching this episode. If you think that Team Bradshaw is right and they are not doing a conspiracy theory, <laughs> then vote for London and in the comments? Yes, in the comments. And if you're Team Arson, put Team Arson in the comments. It's that simple. I don't think that there's a conspiracy theory. I think that they're doing Handmaid's Tale because it won a Grammy. I mean. <laughs> <laughs>By the way, London Bradshaw, the award that you were supposed to be referring to was an Emmy, not the other thing that you mentioned is an Emmy. Hmm. Really? Emmy, Grammy, BMA, MTV Award, Tony Award, same shit, different day, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> well, party people, I think that wraps up our episode for tonight. Thank you for watching Ruminations on Jetspace Magazine. Please leave us a like and a comment or uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more from us. Team Bradshaw. Team Arson, please. Thank you for watching Ruminations on Jetspace Magazine. I'm Ellen and Bradshaw. And my name is Arson Nikki. Blessed be. Blessed be. Blessed be.